Hello and welcome from me, Julian Hartley, the Vicar of St Paul's Church in Astley Bridge. We're still in the national lockdown that's been put in place as a pandemic control measure. So that means our church building has to remain closed for our usual services, except for funerals that is. And one of the funerals that I'm currently arranging is that for Elizabeth Pratt. She's been a member of our church and community for many years and has made a significant and much valued contribution to both. With an eye on our Gospel Bible reading today, Elizabeth was someone who put her talents to good use and who fulfilled her responsibilities and did her duty in an exemplary way. So she's been much loved and will also be much missed. So I know that many people would wish to attend her funeral service. Sadly, the pandemic control measures will strictly limit the number of people who can do so. So I'll send news out about how we're going to manage that when the date and time of the service has been arranged. Meanwhile, here, our online worship at home service is following its usual pattern and is being presented by me from the vicarage, assisted with contributions from their homes by Neve and Pam with the Bible readings and Mel with the music. And as usual, the words of the hymns that Mel has recorded for us will be on the screen. So let us begin with our usual verse from Psalm 29. The Lord gives strength to his people, and the Lord blesses his people with peace. And our response to that, as the night has passed and the day lies open before us, is to pray with one heart and mind, as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, O God, strengthen us and give us peace in it. Amen.
Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying, everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labour pains begin, and there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of the light, and of the day. We don't belong to the darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armour of faith and love, and wearing our helmet, the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. Today's Gospel reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who calls his servants and entrusts his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, according to each of his abilities. Then he went on his journey. The man who received his, the five talents went at once and put on his put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the talent two talents gained two more. The man who received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and his master's money. After a long after a long time the master of whose servants returned and settled accounts with them, the man who received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you have entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more, his master replied. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of my many things. Come and show your, ha come and show your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more, his master replied. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of my many things. Come and show your master's happiness. Then a man who received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting when you had not sown on gathering, you had not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your town in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. You knew I that, that I harvest when I have not sown and gathered, where I have not scat scattered seeds. Well then, you should have my, you should have my put money and deposit with the bankers, so that when I return, I would have received it, the bank, the back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to one else who has the 10 talents. For everyone has to be given more or will have abundance. Whoever does not even have the talent will be, have taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where he will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. When it comes to looking at today's Gospel reading of Matthew chapter 25 and verses 14 to 30, I notice some interesting differences about it. Neve read what might be for many people a familiar version of the story, one that's for years been called the Parable of the Talents, and that's the headline title that was included in the New International Version of the Bible that was first published back in 1979. And that was the version given to me by the Bishop of Liverpool at my ordination 35 years ago. It's also the version of the Bible that's in the pews in our church building. But since then, it's been revised. 
And the latest edition is the one that Janice put on our newsletter that was sent out by email yesterday. And that edition has changed the title to the Parable of the Bags of Gold and swapped the word talent for bag of gold. Bible translators have to cope with the change in meanings or usage of words over the years. And in this case, they've clearly decided that people reading the word talent nowadays think of a meaning that's quite different from what it originally had. And the difference is enough to merit an updated translation, to use words that get closer to the original meaning and to remove the potential for misunderstanding. Bags of gold isn't the exact translation for the words used. It's reckoned that Matthew's Gospel was written in Greek, and our English word talent almost exactly matches to the letter and pronunciation the Greek word used here in Matthew 25. And it used to have the same meaning as well. Talent. But what's one of them? It was a measure of weight and often used in connection with gold and silver, with money. So going for bags of gold as a translation now is reasonable. Our problem, as with so many words, is how the definition or use has changed over the years. So talent, which used to be understood as a weight, is now thought of as a skill. We think of talent as an outstanding ability. A talented doctor, mathematician, artist, a talented singer, actor or actress, a talented entertainer. Just think of all those talent shows on television. They're not about showcasing bags of money or measuring the weight of lumps of silver and gold. Changes of meaning and usage happen often enough with words. Not so long ago I had to get used to my children saying things were wicked, which apparently meant they were brilliant really good, which is rather the opposite of what I'd grown up with wicked meaning. And people of an older generation may well remember when gay was used for something different from what it is today. So quite understandably and rightly, we have to look out for such changes and update our Bible translations to suit. It's something that's worth bearing in mind as we read the Bible even if the edition that we have is only 40 so years old, as in the case of the original New International Version, and especially if we use older versions like the 400-year-old authorised version, the King James Version of the Bible. I've got some favourites when it comes to words that have changed their meanings. I've got a little list, and as time goes by I might well tell you about some of them but today it's been the turn of talent. And there's Matthew using the word as he wrote up the story Jesus told. Translating that as bags of gold does take the reading back closer to what it originally read like. But bags of gold, how big a bag? How much is that? Well, it's not exactly pocket money. Back in Jesus' time, a talent weight of gold could pay the wages of a general labourer for years. I've seen a range of calculations put forward between 10 and 20 years. Taking the one in the middle, it suggested that a talent of gold in Jesus' time was worth around 6,000 denarii, and the daily rate of pay for a general labourer then was one denarius. That makes a talent worth 16 years' pay for a general labourer. So the master goes away and leaves his property in the care of his servants, his staff. We're told about three of them who are given responsibility for the money, quite large sums of money. And the underlying theme of the story is about fulfilling responsibility. The lesson is about how we look after what's been entrusted to us, and do what's expected of us. We're told that the money was distributed among the servants according to their ability. Clearly the one who had five talents or bags of gold was rated quite highly. But even the servant with the one talent or bag of gold was reckoned to have some ability, something going for him. After all, he'd been entrusted with a talent, a bag of gold. It wasn't as if he was considered worthless and left out entirely and been told, 
you go off and do something else. He had something going for him, yet he set himself up to fail. Instead of getting on with the business, instead of doing what was expected of him, instead of doing his duty and fulfilling his responsibility, he bottled it. He did nothing except bury his talent or bag of gold. He did the very thing that would guarantee his failure and his master's wrath. And the usual moral of the tale is, don't be like him. Instead, when you are entrusted with something, fulfill your responsibility, do your duty. Hence, we usually take the parable as a lesson on stewardship, doing our duty, fulfilling our responsibility. Over the years, as the parable of the talents, it's sometimes been taught as a stewardship parable, directly about money, drawing on the original meaning and use of the word. And sometimes it's been taught as an appeal to put talents of the skills and ability kind to use, picking up on the changes in the meaning of the word from what it originally was about. The stewardship lesson works fine with that, making good use of what we have, not burying a talent to borrow a picture from the reading in which one of those servants literally did bury a talent. So you can see where we got that saying from, but applied it to a skill or an ability rather than a bag of gold. There are other things to draw from the parable too, and I'll come back to those another day. For today we've had a word that's changed its meaning, but we can still make sense of it, and the underlying meaning of the story hasn't changed. It's still the same for us as it was for those who originally heard Jesus tell it. The underlying gospel hasn't changed either, even though we update our translations to cope with the changes in our language. And the underlying Christian faith is still the same. So let's declare that faith as we usually do by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
And now let us pray. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth and wisdom, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world, and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten our bishops and all who minister with knowledge and understanding and wisdom, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give your people grace to hear and to receive your word, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bless the leaders of the nations with wisdom, and guide them in ways of peace and justice, as they wrestle with the challenge of the pandemic, and of other tragedies like the explosion in Beirut, and their personal ambitions for those facing looming elections on top of their usual duties. Hear us, good Lord. Guard and strengthen Elizabeth our Queen, that she may keep trust in you, and seek your honour and glory, as she continues to fulfil her role in the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Hear us, good Lord. Endue our Parliament and all ministers of the Crown with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless those who make and administer the law, that they may uphold justice, honesty and truth. Hear us, good Lord. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all creation. Hear us, good Lord. Do we pray for those who struggle as a result of the pandemic and of other tragedies like the explosion in Beirut, whether their suffering is brought on through illness or injury, economic or explosion damage, as a consequence of things beyond our control, or as a result of the actions of others. Bring reconciliation to those in discord and peace to those in distress. Help and comfort for the lonely, the bereaved and the oppressed. Healing and care for the sick in body and mind. And provision for the needs of the homeless, the hungry and the destitute. Hear us, good Lord. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ and those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. 
the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. And now and in the weeks to come, God the Holy Trinity, make you all strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, guide you in truth and peace, and strengthen you to fulfil your responsibilities and do your duty, being good stewards of all that has been entrusted to you. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you now and remain with you always. Amen.